Okay. Um, so today is an examples class, so we'll do a lot of examples, and we'll see the implications of weak duality theorem on very simple problems. Uh, and then, of course, you have another problem in your assignment where you have to find the dual of a quadratic optimization problem. So let's start with uh, the case of so the first example. I want to minimize x such that x squared is less than or equal to 0, x is in R. Okay, so the set S looks like this is my gx, this is my fx, and what does the set look like? So x and x squared, okay, so it looks something like this. <coughs> Is this a convex problem? <coughs> Is this a convex problem? Convex optimization problem, right? So it's a convex problem. So the objective function is convex, the constraint is convex uh, with inequality sign. So it's a convex optimization problem. Uh, what's the optimal solution? What's f star? Zero. Uh, it's a convex problem. Uh, x star is also equal to zero. Uh, is x star a regular point? There's only one constraint function, so yes. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Regularity says that if the first derivative yes. of the h function yes. is equal to, or I'm sorry, is linearly independent, right. then it's regular. If right. Arbor is saying that the answer is zero, then that's not the case. Yeah, so what's the, so this is an active constraint, so let's take the derivative. Uh, gradient of g of x is equal to 2x star, so gradient of g at x star equals to 2x star which is equal to 0. So this implies not linearly, I mean, it, you know, what, what am I going to say about linear independence? So it's just not regular. So x star not regular. So if x star is not regular, can I talk about Lagrange multipliers? So there is no Lagrange multiplier. No Lagrange multiplier. Okay, because x star is not regular, I can't talk about Lagrange multiplier theory here. Okay. Uh, Let's mark this point x star equal to zero. So this is my optimal. Right? So this is fx equal to zero and so fx star equal to zero and gx star equal to zero. Okay, that's the optimal point. In fact, this is the only point in the feasible set because the feasible set is everything on the left side of this particular y axis. Okay, now are there hyperplanes? Yeah. I have a quick question. I feel like I missed something. Um, the regular point there. Um, if our regular, if our point x star is zero, then two times zero equals zero. Does that make it regular? No. So you want for regularity. So if you have one constraint for regularity, you want the derivative to be non-zero. If you have two constraints, then you want the regular. For regularity, you want the derivatives to be linearly independent, and so on. Okay. I guess zero represents the worst case for linear independence, right? Because if you got zero in any group, then the whole group is not yeah. linearly independent. Yeah. There exists non-zero. Should be. Should be a, a Sorry. Uh, 
even more than zero. Like it's a uh, it's a positive definiteness. No, positive definiteness has nothing to do with linear independence. So remember, two vectors are li so uh, v1 to vm are linearly independent if and only if a1 v1 plus plus a n v a m v m equal to 0 implies that a1 to a m are all equal to 0. Okay, So that is the definition of linear. Now in this case if v1, if you only have one vector and v1 is equal to 0 then a1 can be anything. right? So it need not necessarily satisfy this condition and therefore it won't be linearly independent, right? Um, so that's the that's the problem here. Okay, so because the so this is an active constraint at x star, so we need to consider the derivative of the inequality constraint, and that turns out to be equal to zero. Therefore, x star is not regular. Okay, there are no Lagrange multipliers. This is the optimal point. Now, is there a um, is there a hyperplane that passes through this point, this optimal point? and it has a slope which is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? So let's, let's see. Let's do a visual inspection of whether we could draw such a, such a hyperplane or not. So by the way, I just want to make sure that you understand that this goes all the way to infinity, this goes all the way to infinity. Okay, so if I draw a hyperplane like this with mu equal to 0, 1, normal is 0, 1. Uh, it seems to be intersecting with this uh, uh, set S. So therefore, uh, S is not in the positive half space of this particular hyperplane. Um, if I draw anything like this, um, we have S in the positive half space, but it doesn't pass through this optimal point. So this is some mu greater than 0, 1. And then I have a hyperplane that is basically, that looks like this, with mu equals infinity comma 1. And that certainly passes through an optimal point, and S is in the positive half space of this particular hyperplane. But the problem is mu equals to infinity. Right, so that's not uh, what we want. Uh, so you can't have a dual problem. So mu is greater than or equal to zero, but mu should not be equal to infinity in the dual problem. Okay, so there is no no uh, geometric multiplier. Okay, so it's extremely bad problem. Okay, it's 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 convex, so you feel very happy about it, but then you realize that x star is not regular. There's no Lagrange multiplier. You draw the set S, you try to find a hyperplane such that S is completely contained in the positive half space, and the hyperplane passes through the optimal point, and then you come to realize that well, the only hi such hyperplane is a vertical line, for which the uh, mu is equal to infinity, and therefore it's uh, not a valid hyperplane. Okay, so there is no geometric multiplier. Now, remember that weak duality theorem says that you can find the dual problem. Uh, it doesn't get. It doesn't say anything about the existence of geometric multiplier. Okay, so what we will do now is to find the dual of this particular optimization problem. Okay, so then I have L of x mu equals x plus mu x square, mu is greater than or equal to zero. So, I define my Q of mu as inf x in R L of x comma mu. 
which is given by so what happens when mu equals 0 what's the inf what's the inf of the Lagrangian when mu is equal to 0 so let let's do the ca calculation here I want to mini I want to find the inf over x in r of x plus 0 x square so that is inf of x x in r what's the inf minus infinity. minus infinity so i have minus infinity here what happens when mu is greater than 0 so mu should be greater than or equal to 0 so i split it into two uh, separate cases so when mu equals 0 it's minus infinity when mu is greater than 0 let's try to do that inf of x plus mu x square x in r uh, this seems like a convex problem so I can take the first derivative so I get 1 plus 2 mu x uh, that's equal to 0 so this implies that x star will be equal to negative 1 over 2 mu okay so I need to compute x star plus mu x square so let's try to do that here so I have x star plus mu x star square is equal to minus 1 over 2 mu plus what's the answer negative 1 over 4 mu Okay, any questions so far? So now okay. we know, well, do we know, there's, we know that there's going to be a gap between that infimum and the optimal point, correct? That infimum and the optimal point, so. Isn't that a stipulation of the weak duality theorem or is that? Yes, so the weak duality theorem says Q star is less than equal to F star, yeah. okay? Uh, so we are still just trying to find out what q of mu looks like okay uh, but we will get to that important point okay now i am going to erase this part so has it, any question on this derivation it's pretty straightforward okay so let's look at the shape of this particular so what's the domain so d is mu greater than or equal to 0 such that q mu is greater than negative infinity so that means mu greater than 0 right because for mu equal to 0 it's negative infinity so that's out of the domain so let's try to draw the function q in its domain which is mu greater than 0 so this is my mu this is my q mu and what I have is a function that looks like this okay so it goes all the way to negative infinity as mu gets closer to 0 otherwise it looks like a hyperbola okay so that's a uh, so far everything is working out fine is this a concave function right it's a concave function so we verified that q is concave q is concave d is convex but d is an open set okay d is convex but it's not a closed set it's an open set because it's mu greater than 0 
Okay. And what's the supremum? What is Q star? That sup of Q mu greater than or equal to zero. Q of mu actually mu in D. Let me put mu in D. Q of mu, that's my dual problem. And what's the supremum? Zero. Right? So as you can see, the maximum value that, well, not the value, but maximum value that Q is going to achieve, well, Q will never achieve it, but it will achieve it at infinity is zero. Right? So it's growing, it's going up, going up, but it will never cross the zero line because it's negative. So at mu equals infinity, it will achieve its maximum. Okay, it will achieve its supremum. Okay, and so Q star is equal to zero. So my F star is equal to zero. Q star is equal to zero. So weak duality, of course, weak duality says that Q star is going to be less than or equal to F star. In this case, we have Q star is equal to F star. So no duality gap. Okay, any question so far? Okay, so what did we know about no duality gap case? The set of geometric multipliers would be the same as the set of Lagrange multiplier. No, that wasn't the case. That is for convex problems. Uh, where is that? Oh, so the set of geometric multiplier is the same as the set of optimal dual solution. There is no optimal dual solution. There is no geometric multiplier, okay? And of course, this is a convex problem. There is no Lagrange multiplier and there is no geometric multiplier. So in convex problems, if Lagrange multipliers exist, then geometric multipliers would be equal to the Lagrange multiplier, okay? So this is a very good example which you can do by hand and you can see everything working out the way it should. Any question? Yes. So the goal of the solving of the problems is to determine exactly how I should have my system. Right? So we're usually not concerned about what the actual optimal value is, but it's about what I should be. Yes. So is there any way to close that gap? Can we derive a relation bit? No, I don't think that's possible in this case. Uh, or in general, I think that's not possible. Um, you know, the thing is, uh, we will talk about branch and bound algorithm where you will see how this is useful. This, this weak duality theorem is useful. But so far, we are just covering examples to show that the theory holds for specific cases. Yes. Yes. So there is no mu star here, but Q star, yeah. Are you saying Q star? Yeah, Q star is equal to zero. There is no duality gap, but just because there is no duality gap doesn't mean that geometric multipliers would exist. Okay, so this is a case where there is no duality gap, but there is no geometric multiplier. Yes. We also, uh, is it worth, is it correct to say that we only know that there is no duality gap because we are able to solve the problem? Yes, so yes. We wouldn't know. Yes. Any other question? Uh, th you need what is known as Slater constraint quantification. So, which basically means that there has to be a point where the inequality is in strict. 
but that's not the case here in this problem okay uh, we'll get to that proof in the next class any other question okay so let's uh, look at another example I'm going to erase this <coughs> I want to, so if this is the example 2, I want to minimize negative x, uh, x minus 1 half is less than equal to 0, x is in 0, 1, okay, an integer programming problem. This is my dx. This is my fx. What does my set S looks like? So I have fx equal to 0 and gx equal to negative No, yeah, fx equal to 0, gx equals to negative half, so that's here. And then when x is equal to 1, then fx is negative 1 and gx is 1 half. So that's here. Oh, oh. This should be negative half zero. And this should be positive half and then negative 1. Okay, that's my set S, just two points in the set. So what do we know about this uh, problem? What's the optimal solution? So F star is equal to no, I don't think so. It should be zero, right? Uh, so x, so if it is if it is one, if x is equal to one, then I have one minus half. That's positive. So that's not in the feasible set. So this is not in the feasible set. X equal to zero is the only point in the feasible set. So f star is equal to zero. X star is equal to zero. Let's find out the dual problem. So my L of x comma mu is negative x plus mu x minus half. So what's the dual? Q of mu equals to in x in 0 1 negative x plus mu x minus 1 half oh I think I need to do it I need to solve this problem separately so let's create a rough space so I have uh, in over x in 0 1 mu minus 1 x plus no minus mu over 2 that's equal to min of mu minus 1 into 0 minus mu over 2 
get mu minus 1 into 1 minus mu over 2 okay Okay, is it clear the derivation for q of mu? So I just substituted, so x can take only two values, I just substituted it here. So I have mu minus 1 multiplied by 0 minus mu over 2 and then mu minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus mu over 2. Okay. Now if you look at the figure of q of mu, it is going to look something like that is my q of mu. This is 1 and this is negative half. This is mu. Is the function q concave? Right? It is a concave function, piecewise linear. What is the value of q star? q star is suprema mu greater than or equal to 0 q of mu that is equal to negative half. Okay. So, at negative half these two values become equal. So, when when mu equals to 1, then these two values become equal and that is where the maximum point is. So, what we have is q star is equal to negative half is less than f star which is equal to 0. Okay, so, there is a duality gap here. Let us do the third. So, any questions so far on this example? Okay, so, everything we studied yesterday uh, seems to be holding true for this case. I mean, it should hold true for all the cases, right, because uh, it is a, it's a proof. Uh, but, anyways, it is good to see how to derive the dual problem given the original optimization problem. Okay, so let us uh, move on to the dual for linear program. Yes. Uh, we, um, from the, the problem, we can know if there is a, if there is a building gap or not. Um, but what do you mean? So once we check, okay, there is a building gap. Right. Then I can value that. So the question is, can you quantify the duality gap? Right. Um, I don't quite know if you can quantify it. So, here is here is a simple idea. Uh, let me just compute f of x for some x that is feasible. Okay. I know that this is greater than equal to f star which is greater than equal to q star by the weak duality gap. So, if you want to quantify, let us say you know that duality gap exists okay, and you want to know how much is the duality gap. Either you solve to get f star, right, and you solve for q star, which is a concave problem, so this is solvable, 
then you can find out from their difference. If you cannot find F star for whatever reason, it's a very difficult optimization problem, you can't solve this. But since this is concave, I mean convex optimization, you can solve it. You get a value of Q star, then your duality gap is upper bounded by Fx minus Q star, where X is some point in the set, okay? It doesn't matter which point you are picking. Uh, as long as x is feasible, so it should satisfy this constraint. So that's one way to understand or one way to figure out what's an upper bound on duality gap. Is that mean all such bounds that are derived from the feasible set are valid? So yes. if you've got a particularly benign function, then Nice yes, you can. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, so let's move on to linear program. Example three. I want to minimize C transpose X such that AX equal to B and X is greater than equal to zero. X is in RN. Okay. So I am going to define the set capital X as X in Rn, X greater than equal to zero, okay? So then my minimization problem is minimize C transpose X such that AX equal to B, X in capital X. Okay, so what is my L of X comma lambda? Let me write it as C transpose X plus lambda transpose P minus AX. Yeah, so lambda is dealing with the equality constraint and lambda could be in RN. Lambda would be an <coughs> Rm. A is a matrix in M cross N. B is in Rm. Okay, and now I want to find Q of lambda to be in over x in capital X, C minus A transpose lambda transpose X plus lambda transpose B. Everything is clear so far? Now, how do we do this minimization? So let's uh, look at it. So I'm going to separate it into two cases. So C minus A transpose lambda is greater than or equal to zero. C minus A transpose lambda, one of the component is less than, strictly less than zero. 
okay it doesn't matter which component is less than zero so either all the components of this vector is greater than or equal to zero or there is at least one component which is strictly less than zero right so these are the only two cases that could happen so what's the solution in this case so there is of course this constant term lambda transpose p that doesn't depend on x so we can write that uh, anyways so i have lambda transpose p and then what happens to minimization of a positive so i have in over x greater than equal to 0 some vector v which is non negative v transpose x what is this equal to has to be 0 right so v no matter what you take 1 2 okay and then you do this infimization you have x1 plus 2x2 uh where x is greater than equal to 0 so it will only be minimum when x1 and x2 both of them are zero so the inf of this uh v is going to be so in inf of v transpose x where v is non negative vector is going to be equal to 0 so i have lambda transpose b plus 0 and this would be negative infinity any question so far okay so the dual problem for this would be supremum of o oh, i need to find d so what is my d d is equal to lambda in r m such that this condition holds so c minus a transpose lambda is greater than equal to 0 so my dual problem is supremum lambda in d q of lambda so which is the same as supremum of lambda transpose p such that a transpose lambda is less than equal to c lambda in rm you have equality constraint here so the dual of a linear program is another linear program and you have equality constraint here which gets transformed into inequality constraint you have v in the constraint which becomes part of the objective function you have c in the objective function here which becomes part of the constraint set okay so that's the beauty of this uh, dual of a linear program okay any question yes right any any of the linear programming algorithms <laughs> okay so his point is seems like we haven't gained much okay uh well assuming that both these problems are feasible everything looks fine you have min here you have max there and all that 
Um, what you could do, so remember this is, you can run a gradient descent in this space and then you can run a gradient ascent in this space, okay, and you better your estimate of the Lagrange multiplier, right? So the optimal solution to this would be the Lagrange multiplier to this particular problem, okay, corresponding to this equality constraint. So there's something called primal dual algorithm that we haven't talked about. We have studied method of multipliers where you update the x and then you update lambda, and then you update x, and then you update lambda, and so on. You can do the same thing here, but remember that in the method of multipliers, lambda was updated as lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k plus ck hxk. That was method of multipliers. So this wasn't coming out of any optimization problem. This was just some observation that this thing converges to lambda star, and therefore it makes sense to update my lambda k according to this fashion. But in this primal dual algorithm, uh, you don't start with this expression, okay? You don't update lambda k according to this expression. You update lambda k by taking and by updating lambda k in a direction that ascends this objective function and you update xk that descends with this objective function and that's called primal dual algorithm and that's very fast if you are close to x star, okay? So uh, if we have time, we will go over that algorithm but most likely we won't have time uh, to go into primal dual algorithm for linear programming. But the main idea is in method of multipliers, you update lambda k for um, I mean there is no, well there is a reasoning why you update lambda k in this fashion but it doesn't come out of an optimization problem. In primal dual algorithm, uh, you solve the primal optimization problem, then you solve the dual optimization problem, then you solve the primal, then you solve the dual and iteratively you converge to the optimal solution pretty quickly, okay? So just solve Does it get us the optimal So yes, yeah, so basically even when you solve this algorithm, when you, even when you solve this supremum, this maximization problem, you will be running some sort of gradient descent, right? Uh, what I'm saying is instead of solving this problem to completion and then plug this lambda star there, what you do is do an ascent, a gradient step in this space and then do a gradient step in that space and then in this space and in that space and that particular algorithm is very fast. Uh, uh, so if you go to MATLAB linproc solver you will have interior point, you will have simplex method and you will have a primal dual method. So this is the primal dual method. So you take a step, gradient step in primal problem, then you take a gradient step in dual problem, then in primal, then in dual. And that way your xk converges to x star and lambda k converges to lambda star, okay? And that's different from method of multipliers. Yes? Uh, so in this case, if everything is well defined, then there is no gap because it's convex. Uh, no, I think for non-convex, for general non-convex problem where there is a duality gap, it doesn't make sense to use. I mean it makes sense to use primal dual if you want to get guarantee on the optimality gap but I don't think it would otherwise make sense to use primal dual if you want to get to the optimal solution. Okay. We have a little bit of time. So let me talk about a problem where you have equality constraint. So of course we have used it here, but I want to introduce what happens when you have equality constraint in a general problem. not an example. 
this is problem with equality constraints. So the first, I want to minimize f of x such that gx is less than equal to 0, hx is equal to 0. x is in capital X. I am going to transform this problem to minimize fx such that gx is less than equal to 0, hx is less than equal to 0, minus hx is less than equal to 0, and x is in capital X. And then the dual variable corresponding to this would be mu, corresponding to this would be lambda plus, and corresponding to this would be lambda minus. Okay, now I need to define, yeah. You're saying ma how do we go about solving saddle point problem, max min problem? No. It it is a saddle point problem. In fact, if if you have geometric multiplier, then x star mu star is essentially a saddle point of the Lagrangian. So along the x-axis you have uh, a convex situation, and along mu axis you will have a concave situation. So it's a min max problem. And the point x star y x star mu star will be a saddle point in this bigger space. So yeah, so the the max min basically that's the dual. So remember the weak duality theorem we talked about, and you have proved this that max min is greater than equal to, no is less than equal to min max, right? So. The weak duality theorem is essentially coming from this max min and min max problem. Okay, uh, we haven't gone through the proof of that because I didn't want to cover it in the class, but uh, it's there in the book if you want to go and refer to it. You know, the book has a lot of stuff that I would like to cover in the class, but time is limited. Fx plus mu transpose dx plus lambda plus transpose hx plus no minus lambda minus transpose hx I can rewrite this as fx plus mu transpose gx plus lambda plus minus lambda minus transpose h of x. Okay. Now remember that we require mu to be greater than or equal to 0, we require lambda plus to be greater than or equal to 0, we require lambda minus to be greater than or equal to 0. But we have this a uh, non-negative number minus another non-negative number, we can replace this by a number lambda in Rm, right? And we can write the Lagrangian as L x mu lambda, just like we did in the Lagrange multiplier theory. And so I have fx plus mu transpose gx 
plus lambda transpose hx. Okay, and then we define the dual problem q of lambda comma mu as infimum of x in capital X L x mu lambda. And then the dual problem is to take the supremum over lambda in R m mu in R r mu greater than equal to 0 of q lambda mu. Okay. So, it is the same straightforward method except that in the case of inequality constraint we restricted mu to be non-negative. In the case of equality constraint your lambda could take any value. Okay. It could be any vector in Rm. Yes. Oh, set D would be where Q and lambda, okay. So, set D would be the lambda in Rm mu in Rr mu greater than equal to 0 such that Q of lambda mu is greater than negative infinity. Well, I wouldn't say it's poorly behaved. I I think. Well, in, in the sense that it, it's harder to deal with, since our solutions, our, our potential solution space is harder. If we can't restrict ourselves to a that isn't you know, zero right. or greater, right. then it's more complicated. You know, uh, uh, that may not be true because remember that in unconstrained optimization is much easier to deal with than constrained optimization where you have to deal with projection. Now, of course, projection over a box like mu greater than equal to 0 is very cheap so may not be a big problem but uh, still okay in fact in the when you take when you find out the dual for the quadratic program that's given in the assignment you can actually solve this supremum exactly and you can get the solution to the original optimization problem by plugging in uh, this value back into the original solution because the uh, the dual problem would be an unconstrained optimization problem so you can actually just take the derivative, solve it, and then plug it back in here to get the value of x star. Okay, so that would be cool. So I think that's all I have uh, in this class. In the next class, we will talk about why there is no duality gap in convex problems. Okay, so under a specific condition called Slater constraint quantification, will have no duality gap in convex problems. So that we will study in the next class. Yes. Um, I have a question.